Episode 95, huh? 95. Get really close to 100. Let me know if you have any ideas for things that you'd like to see for a episode 100. I've got an idea to myself, but uh, if you've got any ideas, I might change up my plans or something like that. Got a little time to figure out something. If we want to do something kind of big for episode 100, because 100 episodes, that's all triple digit episodes. That's huge. Now that we've got that giant iron farm built, it's time to deal with the actual iron itself. Each of these lights represents about 100,000 iron ingots. So each light is a double chest, plus all the hoppers behind it. It is about 100,000 iron ingots per light. So we're pushing 2 million iron, iron ingots right now. That is a lot of iron. So we want to craft that all into iron blocks. But before we do that, we got another little problem up here with the actual storage itself. It's not exactly working the way I intended. It works, but then after a while, it starts to break because this hopper right here starts to fill up with hop poppies. It only seems to happen on the edges. I don't know why the specific, this one isn't. I might've cleared, some of these I might've cleared out already or something like that, but I cleared these out not that long ago and they're all filled up again. Only the edges for some reason. I don't know why that is. This one isn't super full. It will, these will fill up eventually. And then when they fill up, then this fills up and then all of a sudden poppies can make it through here and into here and into our actual shulker box loader. And then when we get a poppy, even one poppy in there and the shulker box loader breaks and it just stops working. I've had to fix this a few times already and it just keeps breaking again. I thought maybe I got something wrong, but I now see after clearing these out and then seeing it fill back up again, I now know what that's, that's the problem. And it's because I'm holding, oops. So yeah, I'm holding this. So when this signal, I'm holding this block. So this one, so even though there's a composter right underneath it, it can't actually release these. I think what I can do is just put another hopper underneath there and move the composters down one. Cause then this hopper will actually drain. I don't know. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to test it out and see what I can figure out. Asked to warn me that this might be a problem. And I told them, no, it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Well, you were right, Asta. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you were right. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure out a solution to this problem. So I figured out the root of the problem. It's actually that there is a little bit of a delay when it actually composts items. So if I put just a little bit of poppies in here, just enough that it will actually start composting some. You see, everything works properly, and then it'll go to compost, and it'll stop for a second, and then it'll continue, but it has left poppies behind. And this is only because this hopper is actually being held. There's no more poppies coming through, so if more poppies were coming through, then it would continue going, but it's already got those ones left behind. So every time this happens, a little bit more is going to get to see that delay. It's just a couple, you know, just like a second or so, but it adds up over time. And we end up with hoppers that are uh, poppies that are accumulating in this hopper right here. Now, if I took this composter and moved it a block down and put a hopper right underneath it, I don't have any hoppers under me. It still wouldn't work because that hopper would be held by this torch right here. I need to move the composter down two blocks, which means the hopper line to collect the bone meal underneath it needs to be even two blocks lower. And we're already kind of out of room here. We're already running right into all this. It would come block down two whole blocks into this whole light system right here. So that's a pretty big change, but I think that's probably fine. There's something else that I wanted to do in this area anyways. So we might as well just do both of them at once. So the other thing I wanted to do has to do with crafting these iron ingots into iron blocks so that we can move them easier. Now that is a lot that we need to craft. And so we definitely want to automate it. We have come up with an automated crafting system before in the past, but it requires water in order to work properly. So what my idea was originally was that we would come here, we'd push a button and it would spit all of these chests full of items down towards the nether floor. And then we use pistons and slime blocks in order to push them about 50 blocks is all that's necessary that would be 400 blocks in the overworld so that be far enough away that we're not getting lag from the iron farm that we could send them through to a portal and have a crafting system over there and i did the math and based on the fact that i've got two hoppers on each of these 
it would actually be able, and we've got four, we've got all four of these split up into different ones so that we could spit them out very, very quickly. It would take about 50 seconds. If this were completely full, it would take 50 seconds to spit these down under the, under the nether roof and then add a few seconds for it to get moved over there, sent through the portal, accept it on the other side. It might take a minute and a half, two minutes. Wouldn't take very long after an AFK session to send the, all those items over to the other side where the crafting system is. So that is still a pretty good idea. I think that is going to be my plan B because I came up with another idea and that is to revise the crafting system so that it doesn't require water. So this here is a crafting system design that Astazora came up with some time ago. We're using it here to craft emeralds into emerald blocks at our raid farm. So same basic principle. We've got a whole bunch of shulker unloaders here. So it unloads a whole bunch of shulkers all at once puts them into droppers. The droppers spit the items into a water column. There's 32 droppers, so it spits it out at 64 times hopper speed. So over 500,000 items per hour it's capable of spitting out. So uh, 2 million would take us about four hours to craft all those up, but it's AFKable because we can... So the water comes over here, we go over there, and then it comes up there, and it spits it right under the feet of the player, and then we can use item scroller to automate the crafting AFK. And so we'd stand there at the crafting table and we'd stand in this direction into that water and we'd throw the blocks that we crafted into the water and we'd take it across over onto these shulker loaders and these will load up the emerald blocks into shulker boxes for us. So that's all fine and good. This works great. And this is what we wanted to set up in the overworld because obviously all this water is gonna be a problem in the nether. But I had an idea that we could use some of the nether item moving tactics to actually make this in the nether instead of in the overworld. So what we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna drop this floor down because we have to, and as a result, this floor is gonna have to come down as well. We're actually going to revamp the storage. We, I actually want more storage. This storage was designed to be ejected quickly down to the nether roof, and it's not actually that much storage. It's enough for about 12 hours, but if we have the crafting system here, we might want a little more storage, so we don't have to craft it up every time we AFK. So I wanna put more storage here. And then this is gonna to have to be moved anyways. Fortunately, this is actually on the wrong side. This is the back side, and it's supposed to be the front. So we actually wanna move this over onto this side anyways. So it's gonna get dropped down a block, moved over onto this side, and then underneath it, we're gonna build the giant crafting system. And we got lots of room to do that. So this should be fun. Let's get started. So I let this run for a few hours just to make sure that everything was working properly. We got no poppies backing up here whatsoever. No poppies are making it into this order. So everything seems really good here. Everything, it seems to be working really, really cleanly, which is really important because we don't want random items coming down into this down here because that'll actually mess up the crafting system. So down here, we've got the storage. Not much has changed here with the storage. We just have more of it. So now each light reflects uh, two double chests instead of a single double chest. There just wasn't enough room to have a light per double chest anymore. And the lights are kind of haywire right now because I just put the shulker boxes into whatever chest I could put them in at the time. So it'll correct 
correct itself over time, but we won't worry about it too much. And then this did get moved. This was on this side. Now it's over on this side. This is the bone meal that comes from the poppies. Got a decent amount of bone meal that's already come through. And now this is correctly the front side. So this way right here is towards our bases. So that's what's really important. That makes it a lot more convenient for us than the way that it was. And we moved the lights, but we still have the lights that tell us that there are shulker boxes in each of the systems over there. And then we have the crafting system down here. Let's just jump down here and this is the crafting system. So up here we've got eight shulker unloaders that will unload the items very quickly down into these droppers right here. The droppers will spit the items into these channels right here. And then we have some piston pushing systems. We can actually turn that on right now. This powers both the droppers and the piston wall. So you see in just a second, it starts doing that. So items will just kind of stair step down all the way until they reach my inventory. And then we've got two sections. So the back section gets pushed down here. And then there's a bit of a delay so that when I turn it off, it actually runs for a little bit longer because if we've got items right up there, we want to give them enough time so they don't get stuck in the system. So it runs for just long enough for all the re items to come down to me. And then it stops. And then the other switch right here, that is to control the actually releasing the shulker boxes. So up here, we're holding this hopper so that the shulker boxes from the storage can't come down into the shulker unloader. And originally I was gonna make these both on the same switch, but at the last minute, I decided I want them to be on separate switches. So this is now a separate switch. We can control when we wanna release the shulker boxes versus when we wanna actually use the system uh, separately. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to release this for just a second and make sure that all the shulker boxes are unloading properly. Wow, I did not expect them all to work on the first try. Uh, so we wanna check here so that just the one iron means that iron is flowing down. So it's moving at a constant speed. Look right here, so that looks good. That's a good sign. We should have these droppers getting filled up. There we go. And uh, yeah, usually I make a mistake with one or two of these every time but it looks like all of them are working properly that's fantastic we can come down here and see items flowing down into all these droppers that looks really good all right well let's go try using the crafting system then all right we should be ready to go with this so all i have to do is actually switch this on i don't think i have a recipe set i actually got a second it's already falling down on me let's come down over here we're using item scroller let's click here and we use this crafting table right in front of us. Set up our little recipe, middle click on it, that sets the recipe, and then we just start crafting and we just throw the iron blocks into there. And that's all we gotta do. And they, they shouldn't actually cross paths. So here we go. So well, let's actually turn this off for a second so we can see everything working in just a second. Cause it, we can see that none of the items will get stuck up here, first of all. So we can just AFK here. We can just stand right here. And if we hold down the buttons on our computer to do the auto crafting, it'll just do this part for us where we're just picking up everything as we go and we just craft it as we get enough items. And that should be all of the items. So you can see, oh, one last kick and it's done. So a few more here. So that worked great. And there we go. Got a few extra iron here. Anything that we throw down here that's not an iron block is going to go into this chest right here. So it's actually pretty easy to craft iron bars. You can craft nuggets. Sometimes you might just throw iron ingots down there. We don't want those to end up in the shulker box. So naturally we've got sorters down here. So we've got sorters for iron blocks, filters on them. So anything that's not an iron block is gonna run over all these sorters and go over into this chest and anything that is an iron block is going to go down into our shulker box loaders. So originally I was going to have some sort of piston feed tape that would move it across the hoppers and everything like that. But then I realized we're only dealing with 8X and 8X is can be done with a single hopper minecart. So. We're just throwing the items into a single hopper minecart. We've got a couple more hopper minecarts to spread them out across eight hoppers. And then that just did the trick. And then right here we've got, this is a different 4X loader from the one I've used before. This is one I designed and I hadn't had a use for yet, 
but it's using the concepts that I use for my 6X loader, but for a 4X loader. It's not really better than my other 4X loader. The benefit here is that we can actually butt them up against each other. So there's just two shoker box loaders, 4X shoker box loaders just right next to each other, and it just fit the space really well. So that worked really well. And we can actually kind of come in and see if we, you do have to, I don't have a pickaxe on me. My pickaxe is in the chest up here. All right, so we can actually, this one, this loader isn't quite accessible. You do need this block above the shulker box. Otherwise, the random momentum, the shulker boxes might end up on top of the dropper there. So you have to actually have that, but we can actually move it and go in and look and see, but we just have to make sure that we put it back when we're done. So those are the shulker box loaders. This is where the empty shulker boxes go. These are just items. This is where the iron blocks come in from the thing and it, the double chest makes sure it gets spread across the two of them just in case it comes in unevenly. And if we come down here, we've got all the outputs. So when we fill all these shulker boxes, we've got 10 double chests that'll actually hold a lot of iron blocks and then we might want a little bit more than this but it's a good it's definitely a good start so yeah that's basically most of the system there's one other part and that is that we are emptying a bunch of shulker boxes so up here we got the shulker unloader it's going to empty shulker boxes really really quickly so we want to get all those shulker boxes and we actually want to restack them so we've got a shulker box stacker here so that is all the empty shulker boxes come down into this system and when this chest is full it'll spit out exactly 64 shulker boxes empty shulker boxes onto the subsidian push them push them and then they'll end up in this row of hoppers right here and the reason why it's like this is because once you move shulker, stack shulker boxes from one hopper to another, they'll only move one at a time. But you can get a hopper to suck up a stack of 64 from the world. So as we push it across, 64 shulker boxes will get sucked up by this hopper, and then they'll just sit in this hopper. And so we can actually come and grab it. And if this one is full, there's a pusher here. It'll just push it across this wall. So and it'll go into the first one that's not full. So this is all we got to do is come through all here and grab all our, these should be pre-stacked shulker boxes. That'll make it a lot easier for us to go back up and put them back in the system. So yeah, that's the whole system. This was actually quite a lot to develop. These are all parts that I've used before. But man, putting them all together, it just took a lot of testing and to get everything working. There's a lot of components going on in here. There's just a lot of moving parts and everything like that. But it seems like everything is working and that is fantastic. I will put a schematic for this in the description if anybody's interested. I think this is pretty specific to this exact circumstance, and I'm not sure if it's super useful to anybody else. Uh, I think a nether crafter is more cool than it is actually useful. And in our case, it's actually probably kind of a negative thing. I added a lot of hoppers and hopper minecarts to an area that's loaded while we're running the iron farm. I did this because I thought it was cool, not because I thought it was probably the best thing to do. The best thing to do probably would have been my original plan where we'll move them over to the overworld. And that probably actually would have been a, a pretty cool system too. I just wanted to see if I can do this. And I did, and it's very cool. But I will put a schematic in the description. Like I said, most people, um, you probably won't build this exact thing, but there's a lot of cool parts to this that you might find useful. So if you want to take it apart, figure out how everything works together, I encourage it. It's a, it's a pretty cool machine. With that out of the way, we can actually finally AFK this iron farm now. We could have done it before, but the storage was getting super duper full and we only had a couple hours of AFK left before we would have had to figure out something to do with all that iron. And now we have well over 24 hours worth of storage here of AFK and we have something that we can do with all that iron. When it does get full, we can actually craft it down and make more room for more iron. So our goal is to hit 2 million iron blocks it's going to take a long time. I believe it's like 180 hours of AFK because it's 18 million iron ingots. So it's going to take a long time. That's our goal. That's the amount that will fit in the obsidian bank. We'll try. We'll see how it goes. I'll do an AFK session and we can see how we end up. After that, we should have a decent amount, at least a good start. 
Oh yeah, I actually forgot something. We don't have a proper AFK area for this iron farm here. It's actually kind of important because the farm gets pretty laggy at night. It's just the villagers trying to sleep while being scared by zombies. It slows down the process. It makes the farm a little laggier, about 10 MSPT. So the farm will actually run quite a bit faster if we just sleep through every night. So I want to set up an always sleeping machine. Fortunately, we didn't fill up all these cells, and one of the ones we didn't fill is the one directly under this portal. So there's there's nothing in here. So we can actually, I'm thinking even if we did fill up all the rest of the cells, why fill up this one? We can just gut this cell and turn it into a little AFK area, put a little always sleeping machine and some stairs to get up and down, and we should be good to go. Simple setup. All right, so there we go. Nothing too glamorous. This is the same setup I used a few episodes ago for my crop farm. It's actually nighttime right now. You can actually come out and see it's nighttime. And you can see it's running at 60 MSPT. So if I stand here, I click on this. It's going to, I should wake up pointing straight at the bed again. So then all I can have to do is spam click at the bed just all the time. And then that will make me sleep all the time whenever it's nighttime. And you can see now it has dropped to 52.8, 53 MSPT. That's a pretty significant drop. So that'll actually save us quite a little of trouble if we AFK all, all every night. So, and then just scaffolding. I might swap this out at some point in the future, but I don't think it's too bad to have a little bit of scaffolding there. Gets us back and forth between there and the portal. We can come down here. And this is our AFK spot. This should do the trick. I was hoping to do a little bit more in this episode, but that crafting system took quite a bit of time, both to design and to build. So I'm kind of running out of time, but there is one more thing I want to do. I've been wanting to do it for quite a few episodes ever since I built this system up here. So we've got this system where I can get at all the dyes and so we can craft up all the concrete. So we've got this system here and I want to fill it all. I want to get a shulker box of every color of dye and get them all sitting right here so that I don't have to worry about it. Now, I should have most of those colors already. The one I'm missing is brown. So I set up a little micro farm a long time ago. It was inside of my storage system. And at the time, I made a shulker box of brown of cocoa beans. And I had that, and since then I've used well over half of it. So I don't have any more. And it, that old micro farm got torn down when I tore down my old storage building. And I've been meaning to rebuild it for a long time. It's just a tiny little farm. So what I want to do is I want to build it. I was thinking we've got these like small spaces around the island. I was thinking we could build little houses and huts and put micro farms inside of them. So that's what I want to do. I want to build one for the cocoa bean farm and then another one for the actual, the two tall flowers so that we can bone meal them because I don't think I quite have enough yellow currently either. So we could just bone meal up some two tall yellow flowers, uh, probably red as well. We're actually not saving the poppies from the iron farm. So uh, two tall flower farm for the red dye would actually help me quite a bit as well. And then we just need to mix up the rest of the dyes and we should be good, good to go. All right, some fairly simple stuff back here. This cocoa bean farm I came up with a long time ago. I think it was based on somebody else's design, but I ended up coming up with my own thing. I don't remember anymore. It was probably about a year ago at this point. It's not super fast. I mean, it's fast enough. I only need a shulker box. That half shulker box that I used, that was, again, it was about a year ago. So I don't use cocoa beans very, very quickly. So I don't need something much faster than this. I'll put a schematic in the description if you're interested. And if you come up with something that's any faster than this, I'd definitely be interested, but I don't want to spend a lot of effort on it. It's just a little micro farm. It suits my needs. It will work. And then over here, we've got the flower farms. Oh, my inventory is full. Here we go. Let's just stack up some shulker boxes. There we go. All right. And then over here, we've got the flower farms. And these are super simple. It took me about 15 minutes to come up with this design. That's all it is. It's just got an observer here. I think we can see this one a little bit better. So it's just an observer clock right there. This note block pushes a piston that turns it on and off. I used a note block instead of a lever because I was having quasi-connectivity. Uh, a lever on that block right there would actually quasi-power that dispenser there, so it wouldn't actually work. But uh, yeah, this is working great. This should get me everything I need. 
It's interesting. You can actually make a pretty cool flower farm. There's a lot you could do here. You could collect the items. You could choker load them. You could choker unload the bone meal. Yeah, you could make a pretty complex flower farm. I don't know if we'd ever need to, but it's something to think about at some point in time. This will work for now. So let's take what we got here and see if we can make a choker box of each color of dye. So it turns out we're actually short on green. I use green to make the cyan dye for the cyan concrete for the iron farm. And beyond that, I've used a lot of green between slime blocks and emeralds. I have used green to color an awful lot of shulker boxes. And this little farm over here, she is not cutting it because apparently we were low to begin with. And then I used almost all of my green in order to make the cyan dye for the cyan concrete. And that's what we got left. We got a little bit of cyan here and we got a little bit of lime that we already had. And that's all we got. So a new cactus farm was already on my list. So that might get bumped up a little bit because I would like to get all of these dyes together. And I do tend to use green quite a bit, especially cyan. So definitely something I want to figure out. But we've got everything else is all loaded up. We've got a shulker box of every single color. I had an extra loader here. There's plenty of white in here. I just used some of it for something or another. Um, there's like 10, 15 shulker boxes of white dye in there. So I had an extra loader here because the primary colors are everything except for this gray here. I decided to add gray to the list because I use it so much. So gray actually got bumped ahead of all the other colors. I use gray just that much and it's useful if I need more light gray it's one of the two colors I can I can craft up that a little bit easier and then these are all the ones I don't have dispensers for these are all the ones that have to be crafted in some way or another anyways so we've got a shulker box uh we're missing these two and then light blue that one's easy we got the blue flower farm <laughs> So yeah, definitely something we need to come back to because I would like to get a shulker box of each color of dye. That'd be pretty cool. So that's all I have for you today. I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye now.